Yes, it does look like a contradiction in terms, doesn't it, to be arming against the China contingency, although the government doesn't actually use the words China contingency, but at the same time claiming to be stabilising the relationship. And I think you can square the circle or explain the apparent contradiction uh, by reference to what Penny Wong, the way Penny Wong describes Australia's approach, which is two-part. She says it's about stabilisation, but within that, she says there are two elements. Uh, one is to reassure and the other is to deter. So to reassure is to reassure China that Australia wants to be uh, a constructive country uh, operating a positive policy towards China. So uh, Penny Wong's been to Beijing, Anthony Albanese's planning to go to Beijing. Um, they've toned down the rhetoric of the Morrison government, which was quite bellicose, and you'll remember some of the drums of war lines from the Morrison government. Um, re trying to get the Chinese government to uh, remove the punitive trade tariffs that put on Australian exports and just resuming something approaching um, a normal normal bilateral relationship. So that's to reassure China of Australia's goodwill. And the second part is deterrence, and that is for Australia to arm up. So doing things like buying the cruise missiles that you mentioned and other armaments, the AUKUS submarines, uh, these are designed to give Australia uh, the strength to try to deter China against any military adventurism in its region. Uh, there's, an, there's an old a definition um, of diplomacy, Yvonne, which is that uh, diplomacy is saying, nice doggy, while you reach for a big rock. So if you like, this is, this is my own uh, interpretation here, but if you like, the reassurance part is saying, nice doggy, the deterrence part is reaching for the rock. Interesting interpretation there, Peter. Meanwhile, former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has noted that China is no longer a status quo power. What does this mean, especially with regards to Beijing's strategy in disputed territorial waters such as the South China Sea? Yes, uh, what Rudd was getting at in that speech in Singapore, which I reported, was that um, China is now a country that doesn't want to preserve the status quo in international relations, but is a revisionist power. Uh, and it wants to revise a bunch of things. Uh, in the biggest picture, it wants to revise the order of world events and world power and hierarchies. More specifically, it wants to revise where its borders begin and end and other countries' borders begin and end. So it's continuously using um, muscular but non-kinetic uh, power, so therefore not going to war, but pushing and shoving against other states and nations. Um, the Philippines, there are Australian uh, naval vessels there conducting military, uh, regular military manoeuvres with the Philippines right now, as, as we speak, as a matter of fact. Um, but also China has been uh, famously um, intruding into the uh, exclusive economic zone, building uh, islands and military bases in waters also claimed by Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, uh, continuous intrusions into the airspace of Taiwan and also into the airspace of Japan. Um, continuous, or I should say, rather episodic, uh, violent um, encounters across the Himalayan border with India. So uh, that's the sort of thing that Rudd is getting at, is that China is trying to overturn existing borders, existing norms, and create a new power structure with Beijing at the top. And no one country can counter China's aggression alone, not Australia, not the US, which is why alliances such as AUKUS, as you mentioned, the Quad, and even Japan and South Korea setting aside their differences to work with Washington most recently. These are important. Yeah, and it's in fact, it's implicit in the, uh, in the AUKUS deal itself, where the US is bringing its submarine technology to Australia and cooperating with the Brits on other technologies as well. It's implicitly saying we can't do it on our own anymore. China is too powerful. We've lost relative power and scale. Uh, Kurt Campbell, who is the Biden White House uh, coordinator for the Indo-Pacific, actually said it to me on the record a couple of years ago. He said, we, meaning America, can no longer deter China alone. We can't do it alone. So, yes, all of those arrangements you've mentioned are part of a gathering uh, international collective deterrence, is, the, is what the wonks call it, where the US and its allies in the region, including Australia, including, as you mentioned, Japan, South Korea, uh, the Philippines, but also non-allies. So countries uh, like uh, India, Vietnam, are now also uh, increasingly cooperating with the US to hedge against uh, or to deter 
Chinese expansionism in the region. And perhaps the most fascinating recent thing that's happened, and you just mentioned it then, Yvonne, is that the Japanese and the South Koreans have set aside some really deep hostilities and animosities between those two countries. It's come together on Friday in, in, uh, in the US in Camp David um, at Joe Biden's invitation to join hands, declare a trilateral partnership and to critique China's behavior, regional reaction against Chinese assertiveness. Peter Hatcher, great to get your views. Thank you. Pleasure, everyone.